I'm noticing a huge difference. I'm, I'm noticing a lot more Lyft and Uber drivers are out on the roads. The wait time has been severely decreased. We finally got numbers from the government this morning that show uh, the end of pandemic unemployment assistance, the end of the extended benefits. We finally got to see what that pi you know, pick through the python looks like with most of Americans back at work. And lo and behold, we're seeing lower, lower spending among people who have lost their unemployment benefits. What a shock. But my point is, it's time for people to go back to work. And I think some people are going to go back to work, but there's a conundrum in this morning's data. We've had three weeks, three consecutive weeks of rising initial U.S. jobless claims. What's going on? Three weeks. Three weeks in a row. When's the last time you saw that? March, uh, excuse me, April 2020. Last time we saw that was April 2020, now, which were, is COVID were, first month, yeah, they which were makes gigantic sense. Numbers, gigantic Be numbers. But that was numbers. because right. shutdown, stay home, yep. all that stuff. Right. Now, tell me when you saw that pre-April 2020. Oh, well, I mean, they bumped around a lot. But three but they weeks. Were, but they were, they, were, they were at the lowest level in 50 years prior to the pandemic. And Got then it. they spiked up. But again, this is the, where, why are people getting fired in this environment? And I think there's a lack of appreciation for Kai, how, hear your audio. Uh, there's just, there's a lack of appreciation for how American companies have said, basta, I'm automating, I'm replacing you with, there's, there's a thing called flippy at a, White Rock, south of, of Chicago. And for 23 hours a day, seven days a week, down one hour per day uh, for downtime, for cleaning, it makes French fries. Flippy's got a friend behind him that makes burgers. And automation in this country is really accelerating because companies are, are being told, you have to pay higher wages. And they're like, okay, so what do we tell our shareholders? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, how, do, how do we make a profit if we're paying $20 an hour for you to flip a burger? It just doesn't work. The profits don't work. I've heard from around here that you've got small restaurants that have completely gone out of business because they can't make the math work. But in the interim, we've had companies really accelerate this move to automate. So there's a lot of redundancies. You're, you're not going to have as many jobs as you had before. And part of it is because Americans chose to not work when they could have. Chose to not work when they could have. So is this where the capitalist, the innovator says, no problem. You don't want to work. I'm always going to come up with a solution. My solution is I don't have a job for you anymore. Go figure it out for yourself and change your career. Because right. the other day I was uh, talking to uh, Kai. I don't know if you were on that one Zoom with the, the different uh, uh, entrepreneurs. One of the entrepreneur, Manfields, they own a pizza shop. They own several pizza shops. They do very well for themselves. And they showed me an idea about this one guy that is building kitchens, okay, he creates all the uh, 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 locations for you, all the equipment's in there, like $50,000 worth of equipment. You don't have to buy it. They simply rent it out to you at $5,000 a month is what they do. You got the kitchen, everything. And it's a model with Uber uh, uh, Eats that mm -hmm. comes and picks it up or yep. you know some of those models that they're coming mm -hmm. through. And they said, there's a new machine that came out. Doesn't eat anybody. It just makes pizzas for itself. I said, what are you talking about? I said, let me show it to you. They showed it to me, this machine. No joke. It's three things that it shows. First the dough, then it's the cheese, and then you program what to put in there, and it drops the pepper, it drops the uh, uh, mushroom, it drops the whatever you want, and at the end the pizza comes out without needing a person to actually do that work. So We innovate the, as a country. The reality of it is the entrepreneur will always figure out a mm -hmm. solution for the mm -hmm. challenge they're facing. They're not going to sit on their laurels and say, you don't want to come back to work. Oh, my gosh, please come back. Please yeah. come back. No problem. You don't want to. We'll find a replacement for you. You know, everybody talks about working from home. And yeah. I want my privileges and I, I want to have a, a flexible yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Well, working from home peaked out at about 40 something percent. As of the most recent non-farm payroll report, it's down to 13.5, one, 3.5 percent Americans are working from home. So the media hypes it up a lot. What's that percentage again? 13.5. You're saying currently, right now. Currently working from home. And where was the peak? The, it was it, it was north of 40 percent. Holy it's, moly. But that's mm -hmm. the thing. It's been cut two thirds almost. Yes, but that's the thing. And the media makes it sound like, you know, these millennials are going to be able to make their own lifestyle choices and they're going to be dictating mm -hmm. all of the all of uh, all of what their work requirements are to their employer. The employers have been, you know, basically castrated mm -hmm. and it's simply not the case. But there are a lot of jobs that and I'm not time. I'm, you're talking about a, a, a machine that makes pizzas. And I just heard that some mellow mushroom in Delray went out of business. So that would have been a solution for them 12 months ago. Yeah. So, so then this more validates Elon Musk's UBI is eventually going to be eminent. There's nothing we can do about it. It's coming. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you agree with him as well? 
Well, I, I hope he's wrong. And I think that, um, and I think we would agree on this. I think Mitch McConnell is making a last stand so that we can try and get yep. out in front of this. And it's it's not so much- You're talking about the three and a half trillion dollar bill? No, no, I'm talking about raising the debt limit. And mm-hmm. the thing is, Jenny Ellen was on the Hill. She was on the Hill testifying on, on Tuesday. Yep. And she correctly said that all we're doing by raising the debt limit is paying a bill that we've already incurred. It would be like mm-hmm. going to a restaurant, ordering a steak. This is the example she used, eating the steak and then refusing to pay the bill. So these are just seven some odd trillion dollars of debt that we've already incurred as a country. And the debt limit has to be raised in order to cover that tab. But the reason back in 2011, Standard & Poor's mm-hmm. downgraded the sovereign debt rating of the United States from AAA was because in, in, in the negotiations to raise the debt ceiling, Congress refused to address long-term entitlement spending. You hear about it all the time. Look, Social Security is going to run out of money by 2034, mm-hmm. Medicare, Medicare, Medicaid. All of this entitlement spending yeah. has never been addressed. Right. And what McConnell is saying is we're not just going to give you a free pass because the minute we raise that debt ceiling, you're going to ram through three and a half trillion dollars right. of, of, of a social spending bill mm-hmm. purely on party lines. Yeah. He's looking at the midterm elections and trying to stop what you're talking about. Stop what Elon Musk is is predicting will happen to this country. Tom, you're... Well, the two sides to it. And first of all, great to see you again. Hi, and Tom. it's great, great to be back here. We, we have to come to Florida to see each other. You realize we live in the same city. That's right. Okay. Or, or or the American lounge at yes. LaGuardia by accident. Indeed. True. True. So what you, what you have is two things that happened over the nine months, right? During the nine months, we kept spending money. So this nine-month debate that's been going on, we've been spending. And so Janet Yellen is correct. We've already spent the money. Over nine months, people are retiring. Everything, the entitlements are going. The spending has been, been happening. So that's our – but I want to step back to something, go back about two minutes here. Do you remember – I think it was two and a half years ago, three years ago, de Blasio did the thing. It was a double punch. First, he said uh, fast food in New York need to have a, uh, a living wage. And so it was like a minimum, um, what was it, 1050 or 12 that he wanted I to push that. on that. And at the same time, he said, this is too much sugar and yep. held, up, held up a big gulp yep. that you can freely go buy if yep. you want. So at that time, do you remember what there is a McDonald's franchisee that started working with Southwest previously on the kiosks so that people could have quick mm-hmm. and accurate orders could immediately yep. select their language there was all these benefits not just eliminating another teenage kid that was making money it was language it was selection it was accuracy it was speed in the most important two hours of the day 11 to 1 midday yep so guess what this what we're seeing here with automation and everything happening under COVID did not happen now. The entrepreneurs were given a sign and a signal yep. from people like de Blasio a couple years ago on minimum wage and what they were going to enforce on their business. And you gave entrepreneurs a two-year head start to start finding solutions. And now COVID comes out and guess what? The market's pretty big for those solutions yep. and they could sell them to a lot and of people. And they've been accelerated and amplified this whole move to automation. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.